Hello Neuromaniacs, welcome back to the final part of my series on cranial nerves. In this video, I'll be discussing cranial nerves 10, 11 and 12. Respectively, they are the vagus, the spinal accessory and the hypoglossal nerves. Check out the description box down below for links to part 1, 2 and 3, where I discuss cranial nerves 1 through to 9. Stay tuned for the rest of the video and show some love with the subscribe button down below. Let's get started. Cranial nerve number 10, the vagus. This nerve originates from four neuronal cell bodies shown here and emerge out of the medulla region. From the medulla, the nerve exits the cranium via the jugular foramen and descends down the neck, travels past the chest, then abdomen and down to the colon. The brachial fibers emerge from the nucleus ambiguous. These fibers are efferent, special, visceral which mediates swallowing by the pharyngeal muscles as well as speech by the laryngeal muscles. The parasympathetic fibers from the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus, which are efferent, general, visceral, cause vasodilation of blood vessels, innervate glands of the gastrointestinal tract, and provide involuntary muscle control of the esophagus and stomach to enable food motility. In other words, the process of peristalsis. Furthermore, these fibers supply the cardiac AV and SA node to lower heart rate and lastly provide involuntary innovation to smooth muscle within the lungs for bronchoconstriction. The visceral sensory from the solitary nucleus tract are efferent special visceral fibers that assist with some taste perception from the epiglottis and posterior tongue. However, the afferent general visceral fibers carry information about blood pressure as well as oxygen and carbon dioxide concentration from the aortic body. And not to forget, sensory information is also transmitted from the lungs, stomach, liver, kidney, intestines and colon. Lastly, the afferent general somatic fibres from the spinal trigeminal nucleus sense pain, temperature and deep or crude touch of the external auditory canal, as well as the dura of the posterior cranial fossa and mucosa of the larynx for the cough reflex. Question 20. Label these nuclei as either sensory or motor. We've got the nucleus ambiguous, the dorsal vagal nucleus, the solitary tract nucleus, and lastly, the spinal trigeminal nucleus. Question 21. What is the longest cranial nerve? Seeing as we've only discussed one nerve in this video so far, the answer is, of course, the vagus nerve. Moving on to the fairly simple cranial nerve number 11, the spinal accessory. This nerve originates from the spinal accessory nucleus and nucleus ambiguous. It emerges from the medulla region and enters the posterior cranial fossa by the foramen magnum. It then exits the cranial cavity via the jugular foramen and descends down the neck. The spinal accessory nerve contains efferent nerve fibers, meaning it has a motor function. Specifically, it innervates the sternocleidomastoid muscle to allow the head to turn and nod, as well as the trapezius muscle for shoulder elevation. It's important to note the accessory nerve has two parts, spinal and cranial roots. The cranial roots combine with the vagus nerve to innervate the larynx and pharynx, whereas the spinal part contains fibres that innervate the two muscles previously mentioned. Question 22. Which cranial nerves exit the jugular foramen? Question 23. Label these muscles. Let's move on to the final cranial nerve, the hypoglossal. The function of this general somatic efferent nerve is to enable tongue movement. The nerve originates from the hypoglossal nucleus and emerges from the medulla region. It then exits the cranial cavity from the hypoglossal canal located in the posterior cranial fossa. It's not visible on this image here, but if we zoom in, we can see the hypoglossal canal labelled here in green. Extracranially, the nerve descends down the neck to the mandible bone to synapse at the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of the tongue. The extrinsic muscles that are innervated include the hypoglossus, genioglossus, and styloglossus. 
whereas the intrinsic muscles include superior longitudinal, inferior longitudinal, vertical and transverse muscle of the tongue. Question 24. Which foramen does the hypoglossal nerve exit the cranium? It's an easy question to start off, but the answer is the hypoglossal canal. Question 25. Which three extrinsic muscles of the tongue does the hypoglossal nerve innervate? All these muscles mentioned here are in fact extrinsic muscles of a tongue, but the palatoglossus is the only muscle which is not innervated by the hypoglossal nerve. Question 26. A question on anatomy here. Label these as anterior or posterior views of the brainstem. Here you go. Thank you for watching the finale. Comment down below for what you would like to hear next. Don't forget, hit the like button too. Come on, what are you waiting for?